Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Alex. And this is the Tail and Flash Briefing. This week, we have a slightly different format. We're all recording from home. So we're going to add in a video aspect. And uh, let's get right into the topics. So our first topic today is the Amazon Attribution Beta. This was announced at the end of 2019. And is essentially a integrated attribution slash e-commerce funnel tool for the Amazon platform. So if you're a uh, Amazon registered partner, then you can go and um, use this new attribution tool similar to how you would use Google Analytics and feed uh, customized tags for each of your campaigns into the platform to attribute performance in the Amazon platform for purchases on Amazon back to those campaigns. Uh, this is currently in beta, but is available also to partners of those registered brands uh, and can be provisioned as a simple user within the interface. Yeah, and I, the really great thing about this, I think, is previously a lot of the information that was provided from Amazon in terms of sales performance was pretty limited, especially when it comes to the originating source of that purchase. And so with this beta program, I think it's going to really open the door for a lot more measurement as well as understanding of how Amazon is actually playing a role within your e-commerce funnel. And not to mention the fact that they're probably trying to go after Google a little bit and try to steal some marketing dollars away, especially if they can prove out strong ROI within their own sales um, platform itself. For sure, it really has a double benefit to Amazon. It makes it easier to attribute performance for Amazon ads within the platform and see that holistic funnel, but it also lets advertisers optimize their campaigns to sell on Amazon. So even if someone's spending that ad dollar off of Amazon, if it's ultimately driving purchases and making that decision for brands to stay on Amazon and sell on Amazon, then they're taking it out as a win. Yeah, and as a marketer, there's been instances where we've been trying to decide, okay, do we send this click to Amazon or do we try to get that sale on our e-commerce website itself? And there's benefits and drawbacks to both, but now this might make more of a case for having that sales process occur directly within Amazon, assuming that you know all of the other um, profitability type of metrics are still as, as sharp as they can be. What's interesting too is that from the metric perspective, they can report on not just the impressions and clicks that are being generated from the, the Amazon attribution tag, but also looking at other information like detailed page views, add to carts, um, and of course, purchases and revenue. So not only from the sales and action perspective, but when it comes to product engagement and, and some of the softer areas as well, they'll be able to report on that, which I think is interesting. And everything, from my understanding, is exportable as well. So if you have to integrate it with other reports from other platforms, you can do that as well. So it really is just a fully featured like e-commerce funnel attribution tool. And you know, it, it's I think even more important to consider now if you aren't already looking into this solution and do have a, a pretty large presence on the Amazon marketplace, where as e-commerce is becoming even more and more relied upon and, and the the current you know, economy that we're living in, this tool can really help provide more of a baseline for understanding how much value that channel is driving for your business. Great, so on the second major topic that we have today, Instagram is actually announcing that they're working on some new stickers for stories. Um, and this is actually focusing on what they're calling promote professionals. So they're testing this new sticker option that will allow businesses to actually share a business profile directly within the stories via this professional sticker. So it's gonna have kind of a header and a three image preview for the most recent posts that that brand's account has. And really this is, this is a great way that they're trying to encourage users to engage directly with their favorite brands as opposed to being more of a, of, a, of a silent consumer. And so this is something that they're working on rolling out. They're adding new features as well. And earlier this month, they added a new gift card, um, a food order and fundraiser tools to help brands engage with their, con their consumers and their audiences in a time when a lot of us are, are at home for most of the day. The other part I think that's really cool about this is not only 
the engagement aspect of it, but this also encourages more user generated content that might be helping to drive additional followership and engagement with your brand social page in a way that was a little bit more cumbersome within the Instagram platform in the past. Well, I'm excited for this from mainly the um, the one look uh, perspective. I know I've been linked a lot of ads or, uh, or other business links over the years. And typically speaking, okay, I have to click, I need to go to the page to get any sort of feel of what the actual business is like. And with those three images, I can see their most recent post right there within that conversation or story, which is super valuable to me because it can tell me just that that first impression, is this going to be valuable or is this even relevant to me? Yeah, and from an organic social perspective, that might change the, the call to action that you have for some of that stories content where you might be encouraging users to share um, your brain page via their story post in a way that hasn't been done previously. And from a paid perspective, I, there's, a am sure, a high likelihood of incorporating a similar function from the paid side, knowing that the, the stories is a pretty prominent space within the Instagram and Facebook paid world today but also the fact that they're continuing to add features like stickers and other organic elements to stories just at a slower rate on the paid side. And it's pretty cool because there's, there might be some sort of social component here when it comes to sharing their favorite brands and companies. I'm, I'm envisioning something like Yelp, where users might be more prone to review or, or promote brands or, or companies or restaurants that they really do find value in, um, in a way that's a little bit more natural and organic than, than what you might find on other channels. I could, I could also see this being valuable from an influencer perspective. We all know about that hashtag paid or hashtag sponsored. So the ability to post that on the bottom and have it be directly relevant to the brand as well could help with attribution efforts on that end. Maybe try having your followers add this card to some of their stories and, and promote internally to see what sort of engagement you might be able to get. All right, and to close out today's flash briefing, we've got a little bit of a, a cheeky story here, but the, the everyone's favorite ketchup brand, Heinz, actually released a, a recent marketing promotion that is very relevant here in the COVID era of the world. It was actually a 570 piece puzzle that only contained the color red. And everyone knows how difficult and slow it can take to get ketchup out of the, the traditional Heinz bottle. And it seems like they leaned into that sort of nostalgia and uniqueness of their brand to promote a monotonously slow puzzle. And puzzle sales have skyrocketed here during the, the stay at home time. And, and it seems like Brands like Heinz are starting to lean into the craze a little bit more, which is pretty fun to see. So the next time you're looking for a new puzzle, consider the Heinz one. It looks pretty challenging, but maybe you can still complete it. I know you'll be seeing red at the end of it. All right, everyone. Well, we appreciate the time today. Stay safe and stay healthy, and we'll catch you on the next one.